Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Junk You Should Know Show. I'm Dr. Heather Denniston, and today we are talking about natural options for headaches. And here's what's hilarious. I have six roofers on my roof right now, and they are pounding and nailing and stomping, and you're going to get to hear it through the whole show, which is fantastic because it's causing a headache. So it's it's appropriately timed. And I wish I could show you my back backyard because it is a disaster from there tearing off my my uh, my roof. I've never had that done before, so I, I didn't know that's what happens is they destroy your backyard. So anyways, I hope you guys are all well. I hope you have wonderful plans for the weekend and I always love the weekend. So I hope you're looking forward to yours as well. Hey, I want to remind you, <clears throat> uh, there is a link above for the Junk You Should Know show to get yourself some free treats. And so make sure to click on that link in the description and take advantage of that because I want to make sure that uh, I formally thank you for watching and supporting the show. I am so grateful and the show has been just steadily growing and we've had some incredible guests and that's largely due to your guys paying attention and watching and supporting and sharing and I'm grateful. So we are talking about headaches today <clears throat> and it could be a really long show if we spend a lot of time talking about all the different kinds of headaches and all the different um, treatment options that are out there medically, but we're not going to do any of that. We are simply going to talk about some natural solutions for headaches, knowing that there are different types of headaches. There's migraines and classic and common and, and uh, different things that you should be uh, monitoring through your preferred healthcare physician if things are persistent or if you're not sure what's going on, always, always follow up with your healthcare practitioner. But for just a general headache, um, for those of you that suffer migraines, this will be helpful as well. We have some natural solutions. We have some options here that we can talk about. And I'm excited to get into it. We've got, I put six, but I've actually got a lot more than six. So it's bonus day here at the Junk You Should Know show. So here we go. We're gonna talk about things you can take first, natural options of things you can put in your mouth, help your headache. Then we're going to talk about things you can do. And then at the end, <clears throat> there is a bonus of a little pressure point flow that I've developed over the years that has been extremely helpful for those with headaches. So do stay right till the end of the show. You're going to want to hear that. So let's talk about things you can take. Obviously, guess what number one is? No surprise, water. I can't tell you in 22 years of practice how many people came in with ongoing headaches that we solved simply by getting them to drink half their body weight in water. I had one fellow who came in and every day around three or four o'clock, he would have just a splitting headache and he was drinking uh, it was either Gatorade or juice, it was juice. He was drinking juice all day long. And so we first talked about his poor pancreas and insulin spikes that were probably happening from all of that mainlining of sugar. And so we got him transition. He was, he was drinking lots of fluids, but it was all juice. And so that was creating all sorts of biochemistry issues. So we got him slowly transitioning to watering down the juice first and then switching straight to water. Headaches, gone. So hydration is probably the number one, in my opinion, um, ways to treat a headache because it is very commonly a dehydration issue. Number two, magnesium. Magnesium, there, there are all different kinds of magne magnesiums. And I will put a link below to an article on the different types of magnesium. And in my research, there are several different ones that seem to be particularly good for headaches. So there's some conflicting evidence out there. So my suggestion to you is start with just a basic magnesium. I like the calm magnesium, powdered magnesium, and see if it's helpful. Don't dismiss magnesium as a treatment option if the one you tried doesn't work. Uh, go ahead and try a couple of the different ones and certainly do your own research. And I will put a link to an infographic below on uh, one that I found that talked about magnesium and migraines and which magnesium citrate, malate, 
all those different kinds of magnesiums, which ones were best for migraines. So make sure to check the links below. The one thing you want to watch for with magnesium is the fact that if you take too much, you get to poopy pants and you're going to get some diarrhea. And so back off if you are starting to get diarrhea. You may even want to switch which magnesium you're taking. Um, on the flip side, it works very well for constipation. So magnesium is a bit of a wonder dr drug, wonder supplement, because uh, it's also incredible for sleep and relaxation and muscle recovery. So, And many, many of us are deficient in magnesium. So you might solve your whole problem just by hydration and a magnesium supplement. Okay, next histamine containing foods. This is probably the one I know the least about as far as the science correlation, but they are saying things like beer and wine and cured meat and cheeses tend to be high histamine containing foods which can contribute to headaches. So be aware is all I say about that one. My next favorite is B vitamins. So most of the science talks about B2. Some of the science talks about B6. B2 is a minimum of 400 milligrams a day. But here's a little trick. Just get a really good B complex. Make sure you're getting at least 400 of the B2 within the complex. So take enough B to get 400 of the B2. And you can't go wrong with B. You're just going to pee out what you don't use. I mean, if you're if you're hydrated and your pee is a crazy color, it may be a sign that you don't have to take quite as much pee. Um, but the whole thing is that when you're dehydrated, your urine is going to look more concentrated anyway. So sometimes it's hard to tell, is that the B vitamins? Is that the fact that I'm dehydrated? So know that you can't, it's a water soluble supplement. So you can't OD on it like they suspect you can with the fat soluble vitamins. It is hard to absorb vitamin B, and so that's why taking a fair amount of it is not necessarily a bad thing because um, a portion of it does pass through. And for those of you that have had your genetic testing done and have any idea if you are MTHFR positive in the genetic results, typically MTHFR do not absorb vitamin B well and need to go a different route. Now that's a whole other conversation. Check in with your naturopath. Uh, about that. The general doctors don't seem to have quite as much information on the um, MTHFR gene, which is is kind of a big deal. So you, you want to check that. But if you, if you don't know or you um, are not MTHFR positive, a good B complex, you don't have to spend a ton of money, just get a, just get a quality supplement that you know is from a good source and start taking it because B is good for all sorts of things. It's excellent for stress. It's excellent for premenstrual syndrome. It's excellent for energy. Uh, so no harm in taking it anyway. Essential oils. This is a great one because it's easy and so non-invasive, has so many other benefits. My two favorite headache oils are peppermint and lavender. Now, a lot of folks are like, well, I don't know what to do with oils. I get it and I'm not sure how to use it. There's three ways you can use your oils. You can use topically, so you can rub them on your skin. You want to use a carrier oil. You don't want to put a, a pure essential oil right on the skin. It can be a bit burny, and it doesn't transmit as well as if you put it into a carrier oil like a refined coconut oil or an almond oil or whatever your preference is. And so you can massage it into the skin, temples. Okay, you can uh, diffuse it and breathe it in. Great way to uh, get the oils into your system to help with your headaches. And um, you can actually ingest them. So both lavender and peppermint are safe to ingest. And so peppermint is great for digestion anyway. Put a drop in some water, start drinking it, and then you get double the benefit. So essential oils are great. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a little bit of a frog in my throat today. Finally, feverfew is an herb, and here's my history with feverfew. My mother suffered three-day migraines that would knock her out. She would, they would start to come on, she would go to bed, she would get up two days later and feel like she had the worst hangover ever, and they would just completely knock her out. They were terrible. She'd get them about once a month, and her... Some family members also suffered migraines. They started taking feverfew, the migraines went away. She started taking feverfew, and right before my own eyes, no more migraines. 
Feverfew either really works or it does not. So take it for 90 days, and if you are not noticing a change in your headache frequency or intensity, it's probably not gonna work for you. But you might have the chance that really works well, so it's worth trying. Recapping, things you can take. Water, make sure you're hydrated. Magnesium, try the different types of magnesium. If one doesn't work, another one might. Histamine containing foods, B vitamins, B2 in particular, essential oils, and fever few. Now, let's talk about what you can do. In my practice, I found a lot of folks, their headaches came from food sensitivities they were unaware of. And so one of the very first things I have somebody do who has chronic headaches is get their food sensitivities tested. And this very often comes back with some bad news, usually dairy or gluten or eggs. Uh, corn possibly and if we eliminate those a lot of times those headaches will just disappear you know food allergies are interesting because a lot of folks are like I don't have any food sensitivities my stomach never hurts food sensitivities can come in so many different forms from irritability sleeplessness foggy brain memory loss joint pain uh, bloating certainly GI issues but there are so many things that you may not even realize are connected that it is very worth having them taken a look at and starting to maybe do some rotation or elimination. So that's food allergies. Chiropractic, hello, obviously our cervical spine, if not functioning correctly, and if there's any stickiness that is impeding nervous system function, that there's adhesions there, muscle spasming, inflammation, if the joint is not moving through its full range of motion, all of these things can contribute to headaches. I, uh, that was a bread and butter thing in my practice is working with headaches because chiropractic is so effective for headaches because very often it's coming from the cervical spine. So if you have not had regular adjustments, if you have not seen your chiropractor in a while, uh, that really is number one for today. Go and get adjusted, okay? And listen to them as far as a care plan goes. If your chiropractor feels like you need to do a course of care to create proper movement there long-term and not just a quick fix, listen. And I know for several of my patients, they would come in twice a month to get adjusted and keep things moving well because a lot of their external stressors didn't change and so the stress would continue to pile up on the neck. They came in regularly, did not have headaches. Okay, so keep that in mind. Acupuncture, also shown to be very effective for headaches. I like it in combination with the chiropractic, but acupuncture has some great tools, usually little pricky things, that can be super, super effective for headaches. So consider it, put it on your list. Yoga. Yoga is something that you can do regularly, A, obviously to decrease stress, and often headaches are stress-related, and so yoga is awesome for that, but also yoga just maintains flexibility and increases flexibility. It helps put your joints through ranges of motion that you normally wouldn't access, and that can be very effective for stretching muscles and creating mobility, like I said, in the spine. It's also a great support to your chiropractic care, so when you're doing um, regular yoga classes, I find my patients uh, need to be checked less often. And uh, it's just so great for sort of the brain-body connection and calming things down. So an excellent practice for your headache management would be yoga. Finally, get extra sleep, people. Many of us are sleep deprived. Women need a little more sleep than men if you haven't heard the news on the street. And so eight to nine hours for women is standard and so few of you are getting it. So very early in headache treatment, we look at sleep quality, we look at what's happening in the sleep cave, is it conducive to deep sleep or is it full of distractions like junk light and a TV and pets and it's too hot and on and on. So we look at the sleep cave, how long are we sleeping, kind of quality of sleep, and that can really have a big effect on headaches as well. So we talked about things you can take, things you can do, which include food allergy testing, chiropractic, acupuncture, yoga, and proper sleep. A word on ibuprofen, and then we're gonna get to the bonus. The bonus 
flow of pressure points that's going to blow your mind. So let's talk ibuprofen because people take it willy nilly like popcorn, like there's no negative effects on it. And let's just talk about what happens when you take ibuprofen regularly. There was a study done that uh, over a course of time, it was 300 ibuprofen that uh, five times your risk of kidney failure. Because of the filtration that has to happen with this chemical, um, it's very hard on your system. We all know about the potential for gastric ulcers with ibuprofen, but also kidney issues with ibuprofen. And let's break it down. Your headache isn't happening from a lack of ibuprofen or medication. Your headache is happening for some other reason and you're masking it with a medication. So much, much better to find out why is it happening? So is it a subluxation in your spine? Is it stress? Is it lack of sleep? Is it dehydration? Let's work more to find out what the cause of it is instead of popping all sorts of chemicals. Also, keep in mind, some of the natural solutions have actually shown to be more effective. One that I didn't mention is ginger. And ginger in a study actually outperformed one of the migraine medications, Suserma, can't remember. And uh, so that's important because why toxify our system and stress it out and put that burden on it when we have so many other options? Okay, so just recapping again before we go through our flow. Water, magnesium, histamine-containing foods, B vitamins, essential oils, fever few, and then the things you can do, food allergy testing, chiropractic, acupuncture, yoga, and sleep, right? Okay, here we go with the flow. This is my favorite hands-on, self-correcting headache cure. Here we go, two fingers. You might think your temples are right here. Well, and they are. And most people go, oh, massage your temples when you have a headache. There's, there's not really anything there, actually. If you go back two inches, you have a fanned muscle called a temporalis that spreads up over your ears, is a tiny, thin layer of muscles that when people have headaches is full of tiny little trigger points. Trigger points are when muscles get really tight and they form like almost a little bead. And what happens is metabolites get stuck in there because it's so tight, there's no exit. And then it just becomes this toxic little bump and it can cause pain and discomfort. And so you're gonna get your fingers in there and like you're washing your hair, you are just gonna give it a scrub. You're gonna scrub it as hard as you can tolerate. Um, not too hard, but as hard as you can tolerate for 20 seconds. That's temporalis. Then you're gonna come back here. There are two uh, little muscles in the back called your suboccipital muscles. And you're gonna put your fingers in this position, nice and tight together and in kind of a this shape, okay? Not this, Wait, there we go. I love you guys, like this. And then you're gonna reach back and your suboccipit muscles are right at the base of your skull and they're pretty tight and tender and you can even move up the skull a little bit and you're gonna rub across them to try to get them to relax. A lot of headaches come from your suboccipital muscles. Okay, so temporalis, suboccip, next, masseter. We get a lot of headaches from clenching our jaw. And so you get on that little, like if you picture those supermodels with those incredible jaw lines or um, men or women, and they have this masseter muscle that's really prominent, that's where you're gonna go. So it's the fleshy part at the bottom of your jaw and you're just gonna give it a little rub, okay? And that feels really good. So we did temporalis, suboccip, uh, mandible, masseter muscle is the name of the muscle, masseter muscle, jaw muscle. And then finally, and no one likes this one, but it's very effective, your SCM muscle, your strap muscle here, often is tight and can um, contribute to headaches. And so you're gonna pinch it. You're gonna pinch and hold and you're gonna work your way down. So you start right behind the ear and you grab it and you hold it for a count of 10 and then you come down and you grab it and you hold it for a count of 10. And then you come down and you hold it for a count of 10. And one of the things I'll do to even accentuate that even a little bit more is you grab it and then you tilt 
away from the side you're grabbing. And you'll feel that pull. Now, of course, you wanna do both sides. And then the final one is an acupressure point in the web of the thumb and forefinger. Take your two fingers and pinch it for 30 seconds. I already feel like a million dollars, even though the roofers are still banging away out there. So recapping the flow. Temporalis, scrub. Suboxip, scrub. Masseter, massage. SCM or strap muscle, pinch and hold, pinch and hold, and then web, web of thumb and forefinger. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Great natural solutions for headaches. If you have any additional ones, put them in the comments below. I'd love to see. But I will post some stuff on magnesium and uh, essential oils and that kind of thing down below in the comments. And please remember to share the show with friends and family. I would love to spread the news a little wider and make sure that everybody's getting access to some of our great guests and our great subjects. And I look forward to seeing you again next Friday at noon PST. And if you ever miss a show, our show is live on Facebook, but lives forever on YouTube on the Well, Fit and Fed channel. So don't hesitate to pop over there and find a show of your interest and watch it over there. So have a great weekend, everybody. Love to you all, and we'll see you soon.